Shady Sales Tactics, a host of copycats, and the surprising thing George Foreman himself cooks on the grill. George Foreman grills have a long and fascinating history. George Foreman has many skills, from the boxing ring to the screen, and even ministry. Electrical engineering, however, is not one of them. Not surprisingly, the George Foreman grill is not a George Foreman invention. He just helped popularize it. A man named Michael Bohm is actually responsible for coming up with the product. Bohm had previously dabbled in patenting kitchen appliances, including a steamer grill hybrid for Hamilton Beach. The idea for the George Foreman grill came to Bohm from recognizing a widespread desire to cook favorite foods in a healthier way. His prototype, according to Entrepreneur, was made from a propped-up baking sheet. Foreman entered the equation much later, when Sultan tasked Bohm with finding an endorser. Once everything was signed, Bohm's involvement was effectively completed. According to Inventor's Digest, he didn't receive royalties from its eventual success. Capitalizing on its health benefits as its main selling point, the official name of the original product is a bit of a mouthful. George Foreman's Lean Mean Fat-Reducing Grilling Machine. As time passed, more concise branding became in vogue. But the grill remained popular, so the newer models now available on the company's website have more simplified names. Basically, the wordy title no longer appears on the product. Instead, most just say George Foreman and occasionally include, like the first version, an image of his signature. When you do something and sign your name, that means you, you really believe in something. Comedy series like 30 Rock have a history of sending up the name. In the season one episode, The Rural Juror, we're introduced to the Tracy Jordan meat machine. The fictional product is a reference to George Foreman's household appliance, right down to the signature on the packaging. A 2006 episode of The Office also reinforced the modern, simplified name of just the George Foreman grill. Most nights before I go to bed, I will lay six strips of bacon out on my George Foreman grill. The fan-favorite episode opens with Michael Scott calling his fellow Dunder Mifflin employees in excruciating pain, having burnt his foot on the grill getting out of bed. Between the ensuing pity party and the one-upmanship against a concussed Dwight, Michael's antics helped make this episode one of the comedies most celebrated to this day. And, in a roundabout way, George Foreman and his eponymous cooking device are to thank for the story's success. Is this the same grill you grilled your foot on? No. Yes, oh, but I got all the foot off of it. The Lean Mean Fat-Reducing Grilling Machine is the product most people associate George Foreman with. But he was no stranger to lending his likeness to a product by the time he got his hands on that deal. Before the grill made its mid-90s infomercial debut, Foreman was already a familiar face during commercial breaks, thanks to his endorsement deal with auto repair company Meineke. I am not going to pay a lot for this muffler. By George, I think he's got it. The boxing champion continued to help haul car parts well throughout his association with the grill. According to Charlotte Business Journal, Foreman's contract with the North Carolina-based Meineke was renewed in 2004 through 2010, with his duties including TV, radio and print ads, and convention appearances. When George Foreman was first given a prototype of the grill to gauge his interest in becoming its product spokesperson, Foreman shrugged off the idea. He told CNBC, I took a look at it and said, I'm not interested in toys. I think it's a great product for dieters or little girls who want to play barbecue. Yet he kept the prototype, which sat unused for half a year in his home. This ultimately meant that the first person in his household to use it wasn't him, but rather his wife, Mary Joan Martelli. She was into the kitchen gadget and found it especially useful for making fast and kid-friendly meals like grilled cheese sandwiches. She'd been using it all the time when it was just sitting there. She convinced me that it does do the meat justice. To get Foreman on board, Martelli whipped out the grill and made her husband a hamburger, according to Adweek. Clearly, it was a hit, as it convinced Foreman to reconsider the proposal and throw his name on the product. So, Bohm may have come up with the machine and Foreman may have introduced it to the masses, but Martelli was the one who connected the dots. We have her, and one particularly delicious hamburger, to thank. The George Foreman girl's success arrived in the middle of the boxer's successful return to the ring. He had initially retired as an athlete in 1977, a decision that was born out of a spiritual epiphany following a defeat by Jimmy Young. Soon after, as his official website explains, he became an ordained minister. Now I'm on the dressing room table screaming, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me. 
During his comeback, he secured a second world championship title, but in 1997, a defeat by Shannon Briggs proved to be Foreman's true final fight. Foreman's course changed from that of a prizefighter to a full-time businessman. In his memoir, Knockout Entrepreneur, Foreman recalls that immediately following the Briggs fight, when asked for a reaction, he took the opportunity to plug the lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine, saying, the way I figured, I had a microphone in front of me, and this was my chance to make something good out of a bad situation. Back in the locker room, according to CNBC, his lawyer presented him with an oversized royalties check for a million dollars. Sure, he may have been saying goodbye to his sports career, but it still doesn't sound like much of a loss to us. That's why I'm so excited, can't you tell? <laughs> if you're only using the George Foreman grill to make burgers, then you're doing it wrong. As the grill's popularity grew, so did the number of dishes it could help bring to the plate. Removable grill plates were introduced in 2004 with Foreman's The Next Grilleration line, and in 2014, the company came out with the Evolve Grill System. With that development, not only could you remove the dishwasher-safe plates for easy cleaning, but you could swap them out to make different dishes. On top of a grill and panini press, the Evolve version can act as a waffle iron, a griddle, an omelet station, and even a muffin maker. This is my George Foreman family-sized grill that No, it is it. It's my George Foreman griddle that cooks pancakes. No. Now, if we can just find a way to have it brew coffee, we'd have a true one-stop breakfast machine. Fellow pro fighter Hulk Hogan has a long and convoluted history with the George Foreman grill, claiming that he was supposed to be the face of it instead. According to the famous wrestler, either a missed call or a regrettable business decision is the reason we know the device as the George Foreman grill and not the Hulk Hogan grill. It grills burgers, right? My speciality. According to Wrestling Inc., Hogan went up to actor Sam Worthington at 2011's Comic-Con and offered some business advice. Pick your endorsement deals wisely. During that exchange, Hogan reportedly told Worthington that, in the 90s, his manager had a couple of proposals for him. Namely, there were two kitchen appliances that Hogan was reportedly approached to endorse. A meatball maker or a certain two-sided grill press. You probably don't need us to tell you that he didn't pick the grill. In another version of this anecdote, as reported by Fox Sports, Hogan says the reason he missed out on the grill was simply that he missed a call from his attorney. By the time the Hulk returned the call, Foreman had already called dibs. Fortunately for Hogan, he eventually got his own grill, deemed Hulk Hogan's ultimate grill. These are Hulk-sized burgers. Unfortunately for Hogan, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission eventually recalled it because the product was deemed a fire hazard. By 1998, just one year after Foreman's re-retirement from boxing, the George Foreman grill reached $200 million in sales, according to the New York Times. This made the grill the most popular product made by manufacturer Salton. And through all of those sales, Foreman and his partners were collecting 60% of the profits. Oh, we should have smell a vision at this point. <laughs> because... I've already got smell a vision <laughs> <laughs> You do? Woo! That changed in 1999 when the company bought them out for a whopping $137.5 million. With that final payday, Foreman was out. Though his likeness was not, parent company Sultan retained the worldwide rights to use his name and image, and Foreman continued to pop up for occasional appearances and ads. How did things pan out? Ultimately, Celebrity Net Worth estimates Foreman's net worth at $300 million. Looking at his massive royalties cut and that buyout sum, it's no surprise that Foreman's wealth primarily came not from boxing, but from selling kitchen appliances. In fact, he told the AARP that he made much more than $200 million from the grill. It may be a mean, lean machine, but that is most definitely a nice, fat sum. After the undeniable success of the George Foreman grill, suspiciously similar appliances began to hit the airwaves and shelves, many with athletic heroes in tow. Evander, the real deal Holyfield, who had defeated Foreman in the ring in 1991, promoted the appropriately named Real Deal Grill. Track and field Olympian Carl Lewis had the health grill. Hulk Hogan had his ultimate grill, yet none held a candle to Foreman's lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. The one exception was perhaps the Jackie Chan grill, though that kitchen appliance isn't actually a copycat. It's a rebranding of the George Foreman grill for Asian markets. In 2002, grill sales were still going strong, having reached a very respectable $400 million, according to CNN. But some retailers took issue with the practices that contributed to the brand's success. 
A 2002 lawsuit settlement led to Salton paying $8.2 million in damages. At the time, the Chicago Tribune reported that the case, brought forward by attorneys general in 44 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, alleged that the appliance company was using anti-competitive practices to boost numbers. For grilling, you have my grill. And if you don't, you better get one. <laughs> Among those tactics, the suit claimed was pressuring retailers to not reduce the price of the George Foreman grill in their stores so that it matched the price advertised in the product's advertising. The Federal Trade Commission calls this practice, known as price fixing, a major concern of government antitrust enforcement. The suit also alleged that Sultan did not allow stores to stock similar models from competing brands and would go so far as to discontinue supplying the stores with the Foreman grills if they did not comply. The George Foreman Grill is perhaps most commonly associated with greaseless burgers. The original infomercial used burgers to demonstrate the grill's fat-reducing powers, and remember that his wife first convinced him of the product's promise with a burger after all. However, they're not Foreman's favorite thing to cook on his namesake machine. Foreman will tell anyone who asks on social media that his favorite way to use the appliance is to grill salmon steaks, telling one person, salmon steak, salt, pepper, and garlic marinade the most dreamy thing I've done on the GF Grill. He's also been known to grill some of the fish and serve it with bagels and cream cheese. While this is technically a deviation from the grill's primary branding, the man did fight a lion once, so we should probably trust his opinions. And one day, trying to save my brother from the lion, the lion attacked me. I, and I didn't want my brother to be killed. I attacked the lion back. <laughs> 